Okay. Hello! Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to Gen and Dragons The Academy. The first inaugural episode? Yeah? Episode? Episode. Uh, episode. Episode. Yeah, right. Okay, so. Gen and Dragons. Where we drink and roll <laughs> dice. That's basically the story. So, I am Gareth. I'll be your dungeon master tonight. And next to me is the lovely Ricardo. Say hello. Hi, I'm Ricardo. And joining us from basically just down the road is my best bitch, Lulu, otherwise known as Nolotando. Hi, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hello if I've ever heard one. Mm, so, hello. Unfortunately, our th our fourth what? Fourth member. Fourth member couldn't, couldn't join us tonight, but that's fine. We'll put her in somewhere. And yeah, so we've got a nice little story lined up. And if everybody's ready, shall we? Let's fucking roll some dice, man. Okay, that's, that's a very strong energy to start with. So, <laughs> I was going to uh, say let's rock and roll, but... <laughs> Well, yours works better. Yours is a pun, so we can roll them dice. So, yeah. Oh, fuck, that is really good. Yeah, right? So, <laughs> I, so on that note, uh, let's all grab a drink and roll for initiative. That don't really roll for initiative. It's just the same with the show. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, Lulu. Yeah. You ready? Do we, swear, do we swear on this? We don't swear, right? You can. Just... I hope so, because I've been swearing the whole time. There's nothing you wouldn't say in front of your mama. Okay, because I swear to God, I heard you say, let's grab some dicks and not drinks just oh, now. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> okay. What? So I was like, what? So that's a strong energy to start with. Sort of. So, anyway. Many mm -hmm. years ago, there was a town. The town was unremarkable by any means. But it was there. It was known to be a mining town, though it wasn't very outstanding. It wouldn't, nothing fancy was mined. It would mine enough ore just to get by and keep the town going. This town was Aaronworth. Now, if you lived in Aaronworth, you'd either work in, down in the mines, in the local tavern, in the school, or at the artificer's labs. The options weren't great for those who lived there, but they were happy. Some would venture out into the wild, wide world and try to look for more beyond the shelter of the mountains, but a lot would stay and very happy with their lives. But one day, all of that changed. It was a day like any other. The night shift was leaving the mines, covered in dirt and sweat, smiling, talking, stretching, trying to get all the pain out of their muscles. And the day shift was coming down the quarry nice and clean wiping the sleep out of their eye, yawning, and making their way down into the massive quarry. But on this day, well, not but, but on this day, it was just like any other in Aaronworth. It was uneventful. Everything went along as it, as it should. All was mined and children went to school and pints of ale were served. But then without warning or explanation, the mine just disappeared. The whole quarry, gone. In an instant. Um, you could even say that the quarry's disappearance was uneventful in the sense that it just vanished without a trace. No explosions, no sounds of panic, just gone. Like, think of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Just nothing. All that remained was a massive crater in the middle of the town with perfectly smooth sides and a large black opal sp sphere in the center of it. As this happened, the town mourned, like it would, the loss of its citizens, and as time passed, the town just started to decay. There was no source of income, and, you know, nobody did anything. But, as we know, the fates are unpredictable. And before the town completely collapsed, a group called the Academy rolled in, and they just bought the whole town. Everything. The hole in the ground, the taverns, everything around it. And they set up their hit their headquarters right along the rim of the Great Hole. Well, the ditch, as it was so be called, where the quarry once was. And the hole, and they shut off that whole area to the people of Aaronworth. 
years passed, and as it did, the academy grew. They built their compound so large that it completely encircled the rim of the ditch. No one knows what they did there, but every so often there would be a large rainbow-colored flash that would just come from the ditch and followed by an aurora that would hang over the town for hours, sometimes days on end. The influence was further seen in the infrastructure that creates in the town. Large pipes would snake their way through the ground, over buildings and into homes. They would provide some sort of magical energy that powered the lamps in the town. Signs would glow with strange rainbow opal color, providing a light to the streets and allowing the town to glow, well, to grow from this new source of power. The town of Erinworth became more than just a mining town. It was booming into a tourist center with a large inn, more taverns, a gambling den, a thriving spa, and of course, a wave of crime, like they do. But things were good in Erinworth. But one day, just like the quarry, all the members of the academy just disappeared. Now skip ahead a couple years, and this is where we find you two lovely people, on the outskirts of town, gathered around a map. So, would you like to introduce yourselves? Nolatando, you first. I'm not Nolatando here, I am Penelope Mephistopheles. <laughs> oh, Jesus, okay. <laughs> I am a sassy 20-something-year-old tiefling okay. who is on the hunt for powers and mm. kind of trying to find herself. <laughs> so. Trying to find herself? Yes, on an adventure. Adventure! <laughs> nope, stealing that from another, from another Dungeons <laughs> Dragons campaign. Let's not do that. Um, I'm Xiang. I'm kind of... I don't really know is sort of the thing. I'm kind of finding myself as well. The only thing I really know is that I really love my owl. That's pretty much it. Your owl. And owl. does this owl have a name? He does. Oh, do tell. His name is Alfred Pennyfeather the Third. Oh, Alfred Pennyfeather the yes. Third. The Third. He does have a doctorate, but he's not flashy about it. Oh, so a long line of penny feathers. Okay. Okay. So is there anything else you'd like to say about your characters before we begin? Mm, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Okay. So, unbeknownst to each other, I guess, before you came to this town, you received a black opal box. And in this box, there was a little roll of parchment. And on this parchment, scrawled in a messy, messy handwriting, was the single word help and the name of the town Aaronworth. Now, through back channels and just people's gossip and the, the chat of the day, you guys knew that, well, heard that you could get the object that your heart greatest desired in the town of Aaronworth. And alongside the letter, each of you received a different object. Now, Lulu, I didn't actually tell you what yours was. I was supposed to. But shit's been wild. <laughs> so, Lulu, you received a mathematical compass. You know, those little ones that you draw circles with. But I don't like math. <laughs> yeah, I know. Math stuff at least likes math, but that's different. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not a math whore. She just sells math. Oh, so she pedals. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In her little dime bags. <laughs> It's from a long lineage of drug lords and warlords. Okay, fantasy drug lords. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Xiang has an owl. The one is yeah. the, the drug heiress, and the other one has an owl. Yeah. Well, diversity! Diversity! <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, Xiang. Uh, you know what your item was, so could you just explain it to everybody? <clears throat> um, Xiang got a... By the way, how did we get this this uh, item? In a box. 
Oh, in the same box with yes. the... Okay. It just arrived. So, if I remember correctly, yikes, mm-hmm. uh, Xiang got a a cube that has a cylinder hole through it. Yes. That what? is correct. Was there anything else? Did I no. miss? Okay. That cool. Cool. Okay. So, so why, why did Penny get the, the, the compass? She doesn't know yet? Nobody. No. You don't know. I don't know what Xiang has been doing with this box that just has like a hole through it. He's just kind of like lugging it around. He also doesn't know what, what's cracking with it. Yeah, oh. but Penny's feeling very what the fucked because of the math thing and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to do math to sell, to sell drugs. You have to know your incomes and your... Oh, out, God, you know. no. <laughs> so I think you, you would have done a little bit of math by now. <laughs> so you two arrived on the outskirts of town completely oblivious and you didn't know that the other was coming and you rock up and you can see the town in the distance you see some buildings and nothing really else you just see because it's in a mountainous area so there's a lot of mountains surrounding everything you see you see the buildings and you run into each other and anything you want to say to each other i can happy seeing I'll is that there. your voice? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh God, I was so excited. No. no. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you right now. Xiang is not paying any attention. He he hasn't noticed this uh, this tiefling uh, coming towards him. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of. I'm walking. Like, what what is the word? Like a. Like somebody who's in a trance. I'm just kind of walking straight, and you can see my owl flying up above. Ah. Okay. Well, the perky penny says boo! That's what she says. <laughs> Coming on strong there. Yeah, she, she <laughs> just walks like straight into, uh, straight into Penelope and just, just like then comes back to himself and is like, oh, oh, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hello. That's a lot of hellos. <laughs> it's what he does. So does the meth queen just stand there, dejected, not saying no, hello? No, she says, "Wake the." She says, "Wake the hell up and watch where you're walking," because she walked. He walked into me. Stuff. <laughs> I think if you'd remember that, I think you walked into me. Is what I think. It was the other way around for me. I don't recall. <laughs> That's what she said. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, this is a weird energy with the one person that I've just met. Hi, stranger. <laughs> Would you like to meet my owl? I'm scared of owls, though, because they freak me out. We're not going to be good friends, I think. <laughs> we'll just move along. Come on. Are we, are we near, like, a chair or a bench or an inn or something like that that we can, like, go into? Well, before that happens, I want both of okay. you to do a perception check. Okay. So, Lulu, that's a column in the middle. Can you um, see me looking at it? Question. No, I can't. <laughs> question. Can Can Alfred also do a, a perception check? Sure. Fantastic. Because I... She, how, I will, how will Alfred communicate this, is the question. Uh, Alfred and Xiang are linked. Mentally linked, so anything that Alfred sees, Xiang will see as well. Okay. Without a doubt. So, Xiang got a 5, but Alfred got a... Fuck me. Got a 22. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Is what so my Al got. Penny got Penny got a, f- a, f- a 15 plus a 2. So, she got 17. So, 17. Vibes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Xiang saw nothing. Xiang is still busy dealing with the fact that there's another person that he needs to deal with. Okay. So. Who doesn't like 
who doesn't like owls much. No, no, no. Who doesn't like owls much. <laughs> so, Penelope and Alfred, they notice a loud explosion in the distance and a flash of rainbow, rainbow black opal light that flies into the air. Um, I assume that Alfred will communicate this to you. Does he have a voice? He does in my head, but uh, he can't speak to, obviously, uh, anybody else. Well, I can speak through him, but he can't speak. So I think when the loud explosion happens, uh, Xiang is sort of still, like, engaged with uh, Penelope, and um, Alfred just kind of, like, turns to the explosion and just like, ah! That's what he does. He's an owl. <laughs> <laughs> Do owls car? Wait. Apparently this one does. I mean, <laughs> this one does. Yes, Alfred does. <laughs> okay. And in the distance, coming up the street, you see a small halfling woman running towards you with her arms dangling behind her and her hair in a complete frizz, doing some goddamn Naruto running to you, just screaming in a panic. And she's like, oh, Lord, Lord, help me. I don't know what's going <laughs> on. Jesus, there's explosions and there's rainbows in the air. I don't have a fucking idea what's going on. You two over there, run. Save yourselves. She and fucking turns around and bolts. I see you, smart boy. Keep running. Yeah, Alfred didn't leave. Alfred just kind of like took off and stayed hovering. But Chang is gone. And Miss Penelope? Penelope hands her a card for a great stylist because she needs to be fixed. <laughs> the woman comes to a stop next to you and takes the card out of your <laughs> hand and she's like, Honey, what, what is this? I, I don't. I, I have no. I, oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord and Savior. Yes, Jesus is in this world, by the way, for those watching. <laughs> is it on the crucifixion? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Oh, okay. This, this goddamn explosion happens every goddamn day. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what to do. I don't know what causes it, but it comes up and it scares the willies out of me every goddamn time. Oh, Lord. Oh, okay. Penelope. I want you to quickly roll a perception check again. Don't forget that Alfred is still here. Another perception check. Another perception check. Penny got 19. 19. Should Alfred roll one? Nope, just Penny because okay. Alfred's all the way up there. No, he isn't. Okay, whatever. So, you know, I'm going to let you live your life. Penny, you see a black rainbow opal line that's coming down her arm down to her hand. And it's pulsating, you know, like opal does, so the different colors, and it's like, like that. And it's not a tattoo. You can see that it's embedded. It's like kind of in her veins. But you notice that. So eventually the woman just comes to her senses and she's like, you boy, stop, come back here. Oh, Jesus. I was just, oh, I panicked. I panicked. You know, a lot of shit goes on um, down here. And, you know, um, if you don't, if you don't run, oh. Uh, yes. Shiag does not come back, but the owl, <laughs> the owl does land on, I, I don't know, like, the bench that was there or whatever, and just kind of speaks in Shiag's voice and says, y Yes, hello, I am still here, I promise. Oh, sweet Jesus! This is not that weird, I promise. Isn't it? No, it's fine. I don't ever see a bird that could speak to me, and they normally just go, Caw! Okay, but I, but it, but you know it's not the bird, you know that it's me. You you saw me run, and I just said that I'm... Uh, hi, it's me. Hello. Well, you just done ran. If, hey. if I am to believe that you are this so-called just man that just ran off into the distance. Okay, but I am, though. Like, um, this tiefling woman who walked into me very rudely can attest to the fact that this is not the voice of the bird, this is the voice of me. Hello. And you see Alfred just kind of roll his eyes because he knows that Penelope was standing still and she yeah, walked and she's into just her. Like, exactly. But, you know, now that's how familiars are, I guess. So <laughs> the, the woman kind of 
stretches out a hand and you're kind of like eye to eye even though you're on a bench and she kind of stretches out and is like Howdy, I guess. My name's Annabeth Abler. Annabeth Abel. And everybody calls me Annabeth... Uh, no, Jesus. My mouth just stopped working there. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody <laughs> done call me an enabler. Nice to uh? meet y'all. So what brings you here? Pleasant is as she... all holy hell. Her hair is massive and she's still holding this weird card that Penelope gave her. Like, what the fuck is this? Alfred stretches out a wing. And just like pats it on her and just like shakes it. Doesn't say anything, just okay. shakes it. And she's like, Oh, oh Penny, Penny, Penny has a question for her. Did she used to dance in the club in the in the underworld? Uh, she looks honey, familiar. Honey, no. Okay. I've been here my whole damn life. I done run the inn. Oh. Okay. So Wait, you're from the underworld? Oh, wait, you're one of them demon folk, ain't you? Yes, but that she looks very hella weird. familiar. No, Penny doesn't care. <laughs> She's okay. Just like... Penny, don't <laughs> say to I, I just thought I should check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what brings you all here? I got a letter that's, that said help, and I came to help. And then you sort of see Xiang walking sort of sheepishly, like, back to the bench, because he realizes that it's probably weird for everybody that they're talking to the owl. But the owl carries on talking and just says, I, I got a letter that said the town needed help, and so I came to help is what's happening. Okay, I don't, I don't remember the whole town sending out a collective letter asking for help. I don't know what to tell you. I did get one, though. What Was it signed? Was my name under there? Because if it came from the town, I'm in the town. You Did know? it? Was it signed? No, it wasn't. It just said okay. help. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Alfred just kind of like turns to Penny and is like, well, you say something then. Well, I was also bothered. I was on my hot pursuit looking for adventures and I just so happened to receive this letter that also said help. And I made my way over here. And Alfred just like, shrugs like, see? <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell y'all, but y'all should, y'all should just turn around and go home. The things ain't, things ain't right here in Aaronworth. It, it ain't worth being here. It's, uh, it's a dangerous place. Um, there's a lot of ruffians and, uh, the academy, well... They they got here, they kind of fucked shit up, and then they, they just disappeared, and things ain't been right since they am. Isn't the whole world a dangerous place, though? Like, everywhere there's people is a dangerous world. That's where dangerous people are, is where people are. Um, I think, and then as he, as Alfred's busy talking, uh, Xiang gets back to the, the, where the other people are, and Alfred takes off, but Xiang just, like, takes over the conversation immediately and is like I think that's just that's just sort of the nature of life is that every everywhere is dangerous so you know that's 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 what that's what it is so well ain't, ain't y'all just the just like a ray of sunshine no you're fucking not you're depressing as hell <laughs> madam you seem to be the more pleasant and welcoming of the two of you why why y'all here just just go home it ain't safe self-confessed lacquer of things i took it upon myself to come and see what this note was about so i am not going anywhere until i find out well nuts <laughs> okay then well i i run the local inn um Y'all need a place to stay? I'm Take us to out. your lodgings. I'm fine outside, but I will come with you. Because you seem like... Like you might have some answers for some of the questions that I have. Okay then, well, you madam, you seem to be more likeable. So how about you come join me over here? That's and a how, really rude How rude thing of me, say. I didn't... How rude of me, exactly. <laughs> I'm so rude. I didn't ask what's y'all's names. 
I, I mean, think... you did also just say that I'm not a likable person, so I'm fine with you not knowing my name, but I didn't introduce myself to you, tiefling woman. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> so, seeing as this conversation is rolling on as fast as a boulder covered in moss, how about we don't head in, into town? I'll go, I'll take you down to the local inn. And I we still can get... swear I don't see you in the clubs. Well, honey, I don't speak of my past, but I can <laughs> I can assure you that I've done been in this town my whole goddamn life. Did you die and go to hell for a bit, and then like party it up there, and then come back to life? Because that's a thing. Like people do that. Well, I feel mm -hmm. like my I feel like my heart stops every time one of them explosions happens, but I I can't say for sure. Is that maybe what's happening? Is that your heart stops, you go down, you party it up for a bit, and then you come back? Is that a <laughs> thing that people... I feel like that's a thing that people could do. Well, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that there's some, some folk out there that do that, but not me! <laughs> so... I mean, P Penny? Penny was your name, Penny? You do keep saying that you saw her, so maybe she did die, go to hell, get into the clubs, get fucked up. And then come back to life and doesn't remember it. Is that a thing that people do when they die? I think so. But she looks very familiar. Doesn't she have a daughter that maybe died recently? No. Nope. And she <laughs> is living it up <laughs> in the underworld. Well, that well, that'd be funny because I don't. Well, she no is saint. <laughs> I don't got no kids. I am a single woman, proud as ever. Is your mother still alive? Well, that's not very nice to ask. She might be getting on in years, but she's still around. Is your grandmother still alive? Well, no. Well, she might be the one. Yeah, Penelope, maybe. Penelope, she might. You might know an 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 enabler, an enabler's grandmother. Who's mm. dropping it low in the underworld? Was her name Bertha? How did you know? Oh Jesus! I knew it. Yes. I always said. I always said, Grandma, but stop the myth. You're going to go to hell. And now, oh my Jesus! Oh no! I can't believe I figured this out. You, <laughs> you have just oh the distress. She's shaking that thing up for some gold. Is she throwing it back? <laughs> yeah, she making it pop. Jane's <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like looking down, like very, very wide eyed. Like, I can't believe I, 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 I figured that out. I can't believe it. This is amazing. I navigated a human conversation. Awesome. Well, well done. So y'all want to go down, uh, go into town? Yes. Yes. Miss Penny? Well, lead the way in. What? I said lead the way in. Oh. Well, then come on then. Or so... should I say, move your ass in? <laughs> Jesus, don't be mean to this poor woman. <laughs> that's what her grandmother does. <laughs> that's what her grand. That, yes, that's what her, that's what her Mima does. <laughs> oh, no, Xiang said that it, it, uh, in canon. Oh. Xiang said that. Well, I used to call her Meemaw, but that's fine. So, <clears throat> so, Xiang, Penny, and Annabeth, or Anna, Anna Nabler. I tongue twisted myself with my own joke. But We're anyway. going to call her Anna Nabler. Anna Nabler. You guys start walking into town. And as you start going down the hill that leads in, you, things start to become a little bit more clear to you two. So, you see... Firstly, you see a run down long street, basically, with a couple kind of dilapidated buildings on either side, with big signs on them, kind of like neon signs, but magic. Okay. <laughs> there's one that says, like, tavern, and then there's, like, the gambler's den. All of them have, like, hole-in-the-ground related puns. I kind of run out already, so, yeah. Vibes. So the signs are in a state of disrepair. Mm -hmm. Some of them, the letters aren't working and it just looks kind of depressing. 
to say the least. There's a couple people shambling around in town. And you see a lot more people with that black opal markings running down their arms. Some are on their face, some go down their legs. It's all the ones that have their gams out. It's, you know, um, it's all over. Can... Thing is, this isn't something Xi Yang would do because he has Alfred. Can Alfred make a, a perception or an insight or investigation or whatever check it would be, or an arcana check to see what that opal stuff is? is that... I think give it an arcana check. Okay, does Alfred have any arcana? <clears throat> what he has magic. Is your arcana? Penny got manservant. Penny has a manservant. I left him on the way way back. <laughs> Name is Gustavo. Do we have, do we Gustavo. have to turn around? Y'all want to go fetch him? Not really. He's not so important. He'll catch up. As you look back in the distance, you see a man laden completely with bags, like. Up his back, in his arms, he's hunched over like a bloody hunchback of Notre Dame, and he is coming towards you with a bit of dignity, as it to be expected of a manservant. But keep the fuck up, Gustavo. <laughs> I see. Coming, ma'am. But, <laughs> but he, he's struggling. But he, he's 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 a well-trained, classically trained valet. He knows what he's doing. So what <clears throat> what did you roll? Uh, yeah. The thing is, Alfred is an owl. So, yes. like, he's not exactly magically trained. It would probably have been better for Shang to do this. But, yeah, Alfred got a, Alfred got a three. He so got a three. He got a three. He got seven minus four. Because he's not a smart owl. Minus. Minus. Oof. So. Oh, wait. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, Alfred just sees a bunch of Marmite on these people's bodies. He's a fucking owl. What do you want from him? He just sees a bunch of Marmite on their arms and legs and hat and face. You know, just glistening in the sun. So... Marmite. Didn't they wash <laughs> up? So, okay. How about we go get y'all checked in at the local inn, run by y'all's, y'all's truly? How's uh, that sound? How much, uh, how, how much does it... It costs money. Money, right? Money is what it's going to cost. How much of that does it cost? Well, yes, we are a civilized society. We do run on the coin, as one would say. But for y'all, Penny, for y'all, I'll give you a discount. Two gold pieces. And for y'all over there, Xiang, was it? Uh, say three. Because you have got you have got a plus one. Your bird. So does Penelope. She does have Gustavo. Well, Gustavo, Gustavo, lovely feller from the looks of things. Poor boy. He'll stay in the man. He'll stay in the servants' quarters. It's fine. Can the? I mean, the owl can stay outside. Like Alfred is an outside person. Al Alfred can. Alfred can chill. Well, that's is he an something... owl person? Is he a person? No, he's an owl. He's an owl. He's just outside. Like birds do. Like birds do. Alrighty, that's fine. Um, fine, they're two gold. Uh, because I'm being generous. Uh, should Xiang and Penelope make a history check to see if they have money? Because like, I don't know if Xiang has any money on him. Well, I would believe <laughs> that the great, all-powerful meth lord over here would have some spare change <laughs> rolling around. That's fair. Wait, did I mention you guys don't know I saw a myth yet? Right? What? It's a mystery. I'm saying you guys don't know that I saw a myth yet, right? <laughs> it's still a mystery. Okay. <laughs> um, I think Xiang turns to Penelope and says, uh, do you, can you, you look, you have a person that works for you. Would it be, I mean, I will owe you something if you would pay for my room to do a history check as well did you roll should i roll you can roly poly roly polies 
12 and 2. So 14. So, yes, the meth, the meth business has been very kind to you. You started when you were mm -hmm. young. Your father, uh, Jeremiah. Oh, um, it's the fucking old money shit. Yes, that old drug money. God damn. Jeremiah <laughs> Mephistopheles, the sixth, believe it or not. It's a very, very long line. Uh, he started this and he came up with a new type of meth. It was uh, bright red and it was very, very effective and nearly 100% pure. So needless to say, he did very, very well for himself. And at the time of his passing, he, you know, he got old. He lived a good life. At the time of his passing, he passed it all on to you, dear. And you inherited everything. So yes, you are flushed with coin. And Love now are it. you willing to help this lonely... Let me help this peasant. It's fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Did Penelope say that out loud? She thought it. Okay. <laughs> so she's just like, here. <laughs> <laughs> and before you even hand the money over to Xiang, little Annabeth is in there and she grabs it straight out of your hand. So... That's good. Two, a room for two. That'll be wonderful. And uh, I will show your manservant to uh, the outside lodgings. And I'm sure your bird will find a place to stay. So how about we head on in? So, yes. uh, yeah, I think just as they head in, Alfred just sort of like flies up and perches on the 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 roof, but in the front, like watching out sort of. Uh, keeping an eye. Yes, keeping an eye on whatever the fuck is going on. Like, whatever, whoever comes in, like, if they look suspicious, uh, Alfred will let Xiang know. Okay. So, you two go into the yeah. inn, and... Yes, Lily? He flew up, I came in lost, Penny came in lost, and he flew in right the moment as I was about to enter, and Penny yells, GET! Get out of here! <laughs> you creepy yeah. bug eye freak! <laughs> Fucking Xiang turns around, like, scandalized, and was like, Don't speak to my owl like that. Oh, he speaks. Oh, don't okay. speak. Don't. Hey! Speaks. Hey! And just give me a second, because this stranger just disrespected Alfred, who is a doctor. Do you mind? Could you apologize? Uh Never. She walks right past you <laughs> and enters the, the inn. Well, I don't appreciate this kind of conflict in my lobby, but that's fine. So, <laughs> let me show y'all up to your rooms. Hang on, I'm so sorry, Anne. Just give me a second. I need to process. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just give me a second. And she turns to Alfred as like, I don't know what to do. Do you know what to do? Do we just leave this? And what and is then, what is the owl say? Uh, oh no, the owl says nothing. He just like turns his head, and then flies off. Oh, you off. see now he's doing that. He's with the shit now, with the head rotating and all those things. <laughs> <laughs> and then Alfred <laughs> flies away. So Xiang's like, I mean, fine. I'll we'll move on from this for now. You asshole. Her hair, it's over. Because she flipped her hair and walked right past you. So. <laughs> so it's done. <laughs> so you two walk into the inn, Penelope with her, her strut, as to be expected of an heiress. And Xiang looking behind her, staring daggers at this woman, just annoyed as hell. And Alfred kind of indifferent. Oh, Alfred is outside. Yeah, outside indifferent. Okay. So you walk in and on your right, you see the the usual for just a hotel and in there's a sign in desk. You see a concierge sign that's kind of hanging by one of its little uh, chains. It's just dilapidated as hell. On your left, you see the room into uh, you see a doorway into the spa area, but you can kind of tell just looking at it that it is moldy as hell and you wouldn't want to go in there even if even if you got paid to do it 
This is the attic. No, the inn. Oh, it's... the whole inn. Yeah. Didn't we just walk into inn? Into the inn? Yes, you're only in the lobby. It's an inn. Yeah. Wait, but we wouldn't have walked into the inn at all if it was moldy as shit. No, that's just a spa area. Oh, okay, okay. My bad. My bad. Okay, following so, me. But Annabeth is walking in front of you, and she is so proud of what she's got there. It's it's, it's like her home. Well, here we have... This, this was built in the heyday of the town. We've got the spa over there. It needs a little bit of work, but it's still usable, I guess. We got... Well, we used to have a concierge service, uh, but he... Well... Well, he died. <laughs> and, you know, it's hard to get good help around here. So, if you need anything, just ask me. I know everything about everybody and anything except the Academy. We don't know much. So, yeah. Let me take y'all up to your rooms. And you start walking into the... the While well, you walk further into the inn. Up a set of wooden stairs that goes up and does like that. And it has also seen better days. I'm pretty sure if you run your hand over it, you'll see splinters for days. Penny, Penny is holding her nose because she can't stand the spell. And she's also wondering, did the concierge die and crawl up these musty-ass walls? <laughs> Xiang is fine. Xiang, this is, this is nothing to him. Like, your man has slept in the forest. He's... Your boy is good. This is not a bad smell. Okay. So you keep walking up and you get to the landing. And Annabeth puts out her hand and she's like, Well, here y'all are. This is your room. And she puts in the key and she jiggles the living crap out of the car. Fuck. And eventually it opens and then she turns the knob, but the door doesn't actually go in. It doesn't open. So she goes again and again, and eventually just nudges the shoulder against it, and it opens up. And um, I don't think the key was necessary. I think it was unlocked and just jammed. Well, honey, if this was your in, I'd believe you. This is my in. I know all the ins and outs. I know what's happening. But you did, un I mean, we were all here for that. You did unlock it, and then take like 30 seconds to unlock it, and then try to turn the doorknob, and it still didn't open and then we spent another 30 seconds of you trying to open it after it had been unlocked. And then you hit into it. And then it opened. So I do think that it wasn't locked. It was jammed. Penelope, please tell me that I'm not crazy for thinking that. And Nervous Penny is just wondering how she charges two bucks for this place. I mean... You're not saying that out loud, are you? You just... No, she's just like... She's like, her eyes are darting everywhere, and she spots a roach as well. So she's just like, this place is not with the shit. <laughs> Both of you to assume that there are roaches, but okay. So I mean, there fucking sure shit are roaches. I know that you're the DM, but there's definitely roaches in this nasty ass game. No doubt about it. Annabeth does not run a tight ship. She's doing the best she can. <laughs> Things are hard. It makes, it makes Penny nervous to sleep here because she, now she's left the lap of luxury mm. to come and sleep in this dump because she was running away from her mean, mean aunt who's after her money. <gasps> but she's thinking that. <laughs> 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 okay, so we're going we're gonna to pull that string later on. Anyway, <laughs> so the door creaks open slowly. But you look in and there's two queen-size beds, perfectly made, with the finest white Egyptian cotton sheets. And... This is in Egypt? I'm kidding. Okay, well, shit, <laughs> fine. Fantasy Egyptian cotton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to think of a time because that's going to sound weird. Anyway, so the beds look amazing. On the bed, on the pillow, there is a little chocolate. And there is a little mini, well, I'm not going to say mini fridge because that doesn't work, but there is like a little area with little snacks and so on. And so basically the room itself is wonderful. Okay. It's to be expected of what once was a five star inn, basically. So here you go. Y'all can fight over which bed is which, but I can tell you this, they're both fantastic. 
I've got I've got a mini one of these at home. It's like it's like shorter. Still wide, but it's shorter. So if you turn it inside, it's just one long ass bed, but that's fine. I mean, fair, you are a bit shorter than 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 we are. Then certainly then Miss Penelope is. She's a she's a tall woman. Well she's a tall drink of water if you ask me. She's not tall though. But she's a demon. You can have short, a short That's demon. fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That was that was wrong of me. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That was some type of ist of you. And yes. So, do you guys want to get settled in? Do you have um, anything to say to each other? Because you're going to be sharing this room now. For I who think, knows how long? Yeah, I think uh, Xiang walks in, says thank you, obviously. Um, walks in, puts his bags, like his his bag down or whatever the fuck it is he's carrying. And then kind of like cross-legged sits on the rightmost bed and like puts his his staff like over his legs and just kind of like turns to face Penny. Like, I don't know how to start speaking. So I'm going to just sit here until you speak to me. Remember, Penny Penny is also, she's nervous about being away from home. So she's kind of out of character at the moment. <laughs> she's a little more quiet and shyer and more reserved than she was so the, so during the, the daytime. Of... Plot twist, she's scared of the dark too. So do the two of us literally sit on the bed and stare at each other? She awkwardly asks him what's his damage she's shy and she's asking what his damage is okay yes <laughs> um that feels like a loaded question i did meet you about 30 minutes ago um you've met my owl he's cool i used to look like him a little bit ago and now i look like me that's my whole so he story. Was a... Xiang was an owl person. I mean, is Penny asking? Mm-hmm. He, Xiang's just like, uh, no, the owl people are not a real thing. There are people, people, and then there are owls. I was an owl for a couple of years. I don't like being a person that has two legs. So that's high. What's what's your damage? <laughs> Feels like the way to ask this question. <laughs> well, I also don't trust you. You could have been sent by my dreadful, dreadful aunt. But anyways, I'm on the run from her. Why? She decided. I was getting there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize. You just kind of paused. I figured that was like conversation break. It's a traumatic oh. pause. Yeah. <laughs> Shang's, when was the last time Shang spoke to another human? Or another person? <laughs> another being? Well, well, six months ago, my father, who ruled the myth kingdom in the underworld, Wait, did you died. S- I'm, I'm so sorry. I realize you're in the middle of a story. Did you say myth kingdom? What do you mean, yes. myth kingdom? What do you mean? Doesn't the name just speak for itself? Myth kingdom. I mean... They make myth amphetamines and it's a kingdom. I, I do understand that. I do know what drugs are. I feel like they're most probably illegal. Are you... Mm, are you the heiress to like an illegal drug empire? Because that seems like the story that you're... What? The walls have ears. I mean... I mean, cool, but you did say that yourself. Like, I didn't say that first. You said that. So... Could you lower your damn voice, though? Anyways, my dad died, and now my aunt is trying to get her hands on my money, so I had to disappear for a while, okay? I have no response to that. Do you want my... And he just... Shang just, like, picks up the chocolate on his clothes, like, do you want my chocolate? I'm... I'm... I'm sorry? Do I... Is that... Is that what people... Do people say, I'm sorry when this happens to you? Penny grabs the chocolate and just comfort eats. <laughs> and sits down. You're, in you're a welcome. huff. You're welcome. 
<laughs> I feel like you're supposed to say thank you, but what, what do I know? <laughs> as, as Penny takes the chocolate, you hear what can only be described as the most dignified knock on the door you've ever heard in your entire goddamn life. Shang turns his head so fast that his neck like cricks. Well, shit. Because he, he thought, do you still think you're an owl? <laughs> is what Penny shouts. Because <laughs> she heard that crick. Yeah, she <laughs> turns back to Penny like very slowly because his neck is cramping. And he's like, <laughs> fuck off. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's an issue. It's an issue. I'm working through it. So you hear the knock and then the door handle turns and... The door opens with the most ease you could possibly think. It glides open, not even a squeak. And there. But did we say that they could come in, though? Yeah. Who did? I didn't. What? I didn't say they can. Whoever knocked, come in. Oh no. Did does it matter? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. They just oh, fucking okay. came in. Okay, that's super rude. Yeah. Now Penny agrees with you. She's just well, awesome. Standing in the door is Penny's manservant. Oh, Covered Gustavo, in... you rich, you rude ass bitch. I said you should knock three times before I let you in. But, oh, well, but, actually... but ma'am, I, I did knock three times. But you are supposed to wait for us to say you can come in. I feel... Uh, excuse me, young man. Um, I'm not employed. <laughs> I'm not in your service. I'm here, um, Madame Mephistopheles. I'm employed under her. I'm in her charge. I don't care. I'm staying in this room too, and that was very rude. We respect each other. That's what people should do. Well, frankly, you could have helped with the bags then if you respect me so much. But, madam, I have your I have your luggage. Here. No, we're not moving on from that. That was incredibly rude. Why is everybody so rude all the time? Why are and you so rude? And she's on some pipe down, owl boy. Come on in, Gustavo. That was also very rude. <laughs> Why is everybody so rude? <laughs> well, thank you, madam. And Gustavo starts walking into the room. You can see he's struggling, but he's he's just so goddamn well trained. And he doesn't even notice. And he starts laying down your bags, gently stacking them from smallest to tallest. And geometrically shaped. Oh, hold on. Does he does he put the smallest bags on the bottom and then no, start no, no, putting no. the bigger bags on top of the... Okay. Because that would have been fucking hysterical. He's so good at his job, because... except when he stacks the bags. Because you know yeah. Miss Pene because... Penelope Mephistopheles yeah. is there with that full-on designer luggage. And also she's got OCD, so if he doesn't do it right, she'll freak out. Exactly. <laughs> but Xiang doesn't fucking know that. And he... Once he's done, he hands you the black opal box that you've received and says, uh, Madam, uh, here is the, the box with the object which you received previously to our, prior to our arrival. Oh, I got that too. I have one of those. Do you, Penelope, do you have one of those? Mm -hmm. uh, clearly you have one of those. Yeah, I got one of these. In fact, it's got a little doohickey in it. I, also I don't have... know how to use it. I also have a doohickey. And then he she like takes his box out and he's like This feels inappropriate, but I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Penny <laughs> <laughs> so he slaps him. <gasps> she like fucking slaps her back. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Shang slaps her back. One hundred percent Shang slaps her back. <laughs> Uh, uh, and then she realized she's like, oh, you mean the box? Yes. Not the other box. Yes. Madam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. And she'll show him her box. <laughs> so, so she does. Yeah, so she shows Penelope her hers. Takes, takes her box and she opens it. That sounds so bad now. Oh Thank you. <laughs> and she opens it, and inside is a golden compass. None of none of that dark dark material shit. Mm -hmm. A one of those ones you draw circles. Perfectly crafted, perfectly polished gold. And in 
right at the top there is an A. And press into the gold. Okay. Is so, it A for N? Is it A for N A for? <laughs> well, for all you know, it might be. I knew that bitch was messy. <laughs> So Xiang, you show what Penny says is what Penny says to to Xiang. I don't know that the A is for Anne, but I did want to Um Anne did say that she's that she knows everything and everyone, so that we should ask her all the questions. I did want to ask her about like my the the thing I got in the box as well. And he sort of takes it out and he like holds it up. But he holds it up in such a way that, like, because it has a cylinder hole right through the square, or right through the cube, he just kind of, like, holds it up so that he's looking through the, 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 the cylinder. And he's like, this is what I got. I don't know what to do with it. It doesn't make a very, very good uh, periscope or telescope. Yes. Um, so I was going to ask her about th this. So maybe we can ask her if... The compasses. Maybe, 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 maybe somebody stole all of her shit and sent it around. It's a very bad prank, but maybe. So just for a little bit more flavor, I guess, the cube with the cylinder cut through it, it is impossibly black. It is so black that it looks like a complete void. It's that banter black stuff, but even more so. Light just disappears into it, and if you hold it to the side, it just looks like there's a little cube void in the world. But as soon as you turn around, you see the hole through. So there's no markings on it either. It's just completely pitch pitch black, devoid of all light. Um, I think what Xiang does is he's like, uh, Penelope, can I? Uh -huh. Can I borrow your compass for like two seconds? You're gonna steal it. I don't trust you, owl boy. I'm definitely not going to steal it. <coughs> I really don't like the hurtful nicknames. Again, we are essentially strangers. This feels very rude. Can I you borrow can. it? She roughly hands it over to him. I really don't get why everybody's so rude. And he <laughs> just puts both of the things on the bed and uh, he casts Detect Magic on each of them. So uh, you feel, or uh, what you guys see is a little wisp of air sort of like starts in the one hand and starts in the other hand because he's casting Detect Magic twice, right? Mm hmm uh, one over the box and one over the compass. And you just see two little tornadoes uh, going in his hands. So, you're supposed to roll with that one, aren't you? Nope. No, no, don't even roll. It just happens. So, from these two items, the compass, you get nothing. Okay. It is just a compass. But the cube with the, the hole through it, it's kind of like... It just, it's otherworldly, you could say that. The world, the, the magic that's coming off it, it doesn't feel, it's nothing you've ever noticed before or felt before or experienced before. It's just, it's different. It's almost the reverse of normal magic. The, it doesn't feel like it's radiating energy. It's more like it's just purely absorbing. And... That's roughly it. You can't tell what type of magic it is or anything. It's just this void of backwards magic. Hey, Penelope. Since you were such an asshole to me, I would just very. I'm very glad that I get to say that your compass is not important and has no magical properties, while mine seems to be very important and all the magical properties. So here you go. Fuck you. But also, now that we've put this behind us, I would like to be your friend. And, like, stretches out his hand. Only now, why didn't you realize that I was a magical-ass bitch earlier? You were rude to me. 
That's why. You're too sensitive. <laughs> You're rude. I don't understand. <laughs> why are you rude? Do you want your compass back? Penny I mean, grabs it. And then she unbelievable. Puts it back. And then she's like, here, Gustavo, here. And Gustavo, <laughs> he, now with all his bags down, he stands to his full height, dignified six foot in his suit and holding the box in his one hand. He walks over, oh, yes, thank you, mom. And he puts it in the box, closes it lightly. You don't even hear a sound. It's just this man. I don't know where you found him, but he is so perfectly trained. He is like a god amongst valets. Tripping now. I thought I was tripping because I saw the cat tail, cinnamon's <laughs> tail. And it just. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's cinnamon sorry. for everybody watching. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got the perfect ballad. So he takes the box and he places it very gently at the end of the, sh the short end of your bag so it fits in the gradient. And then you hear a light knock on the door frame and there is Annabeth looking at like hi y'all how you doing all settled in hey things, you sketchy bitch things are a little bit tense in the room well i can tell uh but and her face goes white and she sees the boxes wait no but didn't gustava just put the one yeah. box away so no, she it's only sees the in other. the line with her bags oh i see okay her face goes completely white seeing the boxes and she's like Where'd y'all get those? What what are y'all doing with those boxes? That's how we got the message. The help th you remember we had this conversation. We and said and also and also what's a to ya? Is what Penny asks. Well, honey, I've seen lots of these boxes. I've seen lots of people come and go from this town and let's just say they go home in other boxes. Bigger boxes. How much bigger? Well, if you're going to have make me spell it out, person-sized boxes. <laughs> I, I told y'all. I told y'all leave. Let's put those boxes down and go. But y'all don't want to listen. Now y'all in here. Uh, y'all stuck. I mean, stuck is an interesting word. And Xiang just kind of like flops down on the bed. And... He sort of goes into a trance, and he's an Alfred now. As Alfred, yeah, Alfred. Basically, a, okay. Do a perception check again. Okay. Also, oh, she needs to stop another, doing that. It's, it's another <laughs> twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Alfred is fucking perceptive. Alfred sees in the distance that the rays of rainbow light that came from the pit had collected and started coming down over the town like a barrier. Very much an under the dome situation. Is it still busy dropping? No. It's hit the floor. So we can't get out? Uh, yeah. You don't I, know this. Um, um, Alfred, uh, Alfred takes off as far as... He can travel, I think, like doesn't specify but it says that he can get like super far away from his uh xiang and alfred can be any distance apart i think as long as they're on the same plane of existence okay um so he just goes as far as he can like alfred is properly flying around the edge of the dome looking for any sort of flaw any thing that he can pick up just fucking anything because literally the worst like alfred and Xiang inside of alfred the two of them are having a proper fucking panic attack so alfred flies as far as he can around oh fuck i just realized i've had advantage on perception the entire time well your roles have been good enough to yeah. not it. so alfred has he flies as far as he can around the dome that's formed and it's impenetrable, basically. He touches his wing across it as he flies. And I was about to say, I think he tries to, like, actually, like... Go through. Yeah. He just, like, fucking takes off. Tries to do that thing that owls do with a, like, dive bomb. And then, yeah. 
he tries to get like does whatever he can to get through. Well, I'm not gonna kill your owl. I mean, he comes episode. back. He's magic. Yeah, but fair. If he did that, basically slam straight into the wall. Okay. There's nothing there, and it just ripples out from the impact site. Rainbow black ripples outwards. But it's is it a see through dope? Yes. Okay, but it's but got in, like a shimmer in, to it. Yeah, but in the impact, it goes. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, then I think uh, when Xiang realizes there's no exit, he pulls back. He like comes back into himself and he just sits up straight and is like, "We can't leave. We're stuck." Well, I told y'all, told y'all to leave. I y'all mean, you listen. you didn't tell us that if we didn't leave, we'd be fucking trapped forever, my dude. Well, y'all didn't ask. That's a really shitty thing to say. And now, who's Penny. the road one? <laughs> Penny don't just don't you worry, though. Didn't I tell you she was sketchy? You did actually tell me that she was sketchy. My bad. I'm so sorry I should have listened to you. Because, Anne, you're kind of an asshole. Well, honey, who's think... an asshole? Anne. <laughs> Well, honey, oh, I don't um... appreciate y'all tone. I understand that y'all st- y'all are in quite a predicament now. Um, but I say you got two options. You kind of just deal with it or you die. It's kind of how it is. Not, not the way I said that, that sounded very threatening. That was incredibly threatening. No, honey, dear. No. Didn't I tell you she was sketchy? <laughs> you did. You did. You did. You 100% did say that Anne was sketchy and I didn't believe you. And now we're both stuck here. I, sp- I assume we're not stuck in this room for the entire time. We can, like, leave the room and maybe be in different rooms that aren't maybe sharing. Because I feel like you're probably a lot to be in a, uh, as a roommate with. But, you know... To each his own, and this is sort of what you have to do. And hmm. Well, honey, no, y'all ain't stuck in this room, but y'all stuck in this town until you can solve the boxes, basically. And what? I'm just gonna say this now. Nobody's done it. Nobody's lived. Fucking choice. Cool. So, yeah, I got a cupboard full of them boxes, but that's besides the point. Yeah, Xiang just like holds up a hand to Anne, just like just oh. stop talking, and turns to Penny and he's like, "I just tried to go all around here to get. Um, can you do anything to get us out? I can ask questions. And did you send these motherfucking boxes?" Oh, honey, no. No, 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 no. I, I, no. These things scare the willies out of me. Bitch, you said, bitch, you said you had a room full of these boxes. Yeah, because the people keep dying. I'm not going to just keep having them littering around my hotel. Um, maybe you should have a, have signs all around the town that says, if you have a box that looks like this, don't come in, you're going to be trapped. I feel like that's probably a smart idea. Because, like... Well, honey, if only it was so simple. It's not. But that's beside the point. Who wants to get a drink? I fucking need a drink. Drinks? Penny? I need a drink. Like, in real time, though, too. <laughs> okay. I think with that, I think let's take a quick break. And we'll be back in, like, five minutes or so. Sure. Okay.
one. God could give me one thing. It would just be make the stallion lose. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one way of coming back. So, hi, we're back. Okay, one thing I forgot to ask it right in the beginning. What are y'all drinking? Oh, right. Yeah, it's too cold for me to have a gin. So I'm having an Irish coffee. An Irish coffee? Yes. Yeah, so, well, I don't know if it's Irish. I've got... I made coffee and I've added some rum to it. I don't know what you... So should I coffee. do? Should I do? Should I do the influencer thing with my hand? Oh, <laughs> I'm drinking Berninzo. Berninzo, can you see? Bernini, it's beautiful. This episode sponsored yeah. by Bernini. No, it isn't. Everybody, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I have. And I'm drinking. And I'm drinking it in my crystal flute. Oh, you're so bougie! Oh my god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and I've got a mint julep made with Ooh. Johnny Walker. Because he's a mint. The garden. I mean, Just because you're a refreshing bitch, I love it. I'm I mean, refined. Should I have said that my rum is Kraken rum? It's fucking rum. Yeah, it's the good shit. Okay. But anywho. Okay, so, so we're back. We're back. So, y'all want to get a drink? I think y'all gonna need one after all this shit. Uh, yes, I need a drink very badly. Penelope, would you like to... Okay. Shall we, go, shall we go get a drink, Penelope? Oh, with the lady. <laughs> <laughs> with <Yes>. Anne. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if I want to drink with Anne. I'm still slightly... Iffy about her, because she hella sketchy. Yeah. Anne had nothing to do with y'all being here. I'm just going to put that out there. We don't know. Uh, She's still fuck. sus as fuck, though. She's still sus as fuck. Exactly. Would you like to do an investigation check into yes. Anne's level of sus? Yes. Either of you, both of you? I will make yes. an investigation check. Which one uh, is investigation? There it is. I don't have glasses anymore, so I can't see that good. <laughs> 12. Twelve. I got a 12. Oh, damn, I got three. Three. So you look at this half leg woman. Her hair is a mess. She's got the black opal lines going down her arms and legs. And, but Didn't smile... I tell her to contact my stylist? Because You did, but she, she slipped the card in her pocket. But In her titty pocket? Her titty pocket. But her smile is as honest as could be. Okay. She, she, and her smile is honest and her fear was real when she saw those boxes. Okay, and... Let's go get a drink. Well, hot damn. Okay, I'm going to take you to the Should best... I put Bernie, Bernini there just so that they can see if they're, <laughs> they're going to watch? Uh, I'll tag them in the stream and they can see and maybe they'll sponsor. <laughs> so... I'm not a regular, I'm not a regular schmegular degula oh. influencer, but I could influence. That is true. You're <laughs> influencing our opinion of you anyway. <laughs> So let me take y'all down to the ditch. And she motions for you to come out the door with her. Okay. Do we fo well, I, uh, Xiang follows. So she takes you out the door, down the rickety stairs that's full of splinters, through the lobby, and into the street. And this is the first time you actually see the big, well, Penny at least, sees the, the dome, the rainbow glistening dome that's over the entire town. And does she just take it in her stride? Because she's curious, she does. Okay. So so we're back on the street, right? Yeah, back on the street. And... Yeah, Alfred lands on Xiang's shoulder again. Ah! He's gonna oh. land, he's there. He's like... Okay, Penelope, ah! listen, hey, hey, listen. We're gonna be in the same room for a very long time. Actually, she didn't say it out loud. What she did say is "motherfucker" when she, because she was startled. <laughs> Penelope, we are going to be stuck in this dome until we can figure things out. Uh, so I'm gonna need you to be real cool about Alfred because he's kind of important to me. So as long as he doesn't look my way. I mean, he is going to look your way. Just gonna let you, just gonna tell you that one right now. 
but I'll be cool with Gustavo, your slave. And but valet. Gustavo is a person. He is a valet. He is he's my life. He's like he's my, he's my support system. He's and Alfred trained. is my support system. So do you see like we've both got like a support system going to stop us from like having panic attacks constantly? Um, we good? We go are you gonna be good with Alfred? Say yes. Build, build a bridge. Okay. And cool. Get cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Jesus. Let's go. So mean. So <laughs> Annabeth takes a little hop and she starts guiding towards the ditch. And you keep walking through the streets and eventually you see it. It is without a shadow of a doubt, it is the, the sketchiest looking bar you've ever seen in your entire life. Above the door, there is a big black void circle with the words, the ditch written over it in those um, kind of neon lights. But it keeps flickering in and out of just, it's, it's mm -hmm. awful. It is a horrible place. And you start, she starts taking you inside and you see it's, it's sparsely populated. There's about three other people in the, in the bar. They're all looking a bit dejected, especially since now they see that oh, the dome's down again. Well, okay, fine. Uh, Xiang turns to Penny and is like, oh, cool. At least we're not the only ones. It's going to be day drinking today. Awesome. Yeah. These people have been day drinking for a while. And you look to Penelope me. yells, Party! <laughs> Party's here! One guy <laughs> in the back corner, he raises his hand, like, Yeah! I think Shiang does the same thing. Shiang also like, Yeah, let's party! So he's just given up on life now. No, 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 no. Shiang is fucking fully. I mean, Penelope's giving off a very specific energy, and Shiang doesn't know how to navigate other humans. Or other people, so Xiang is just kind of copying Penelope's energy. So he's also like, Yeah! Party! The party's here! We're fantastic, we're beautiful, we're fabulous, what do you want from us? Okay. <laughs> you, see at, you see at the bar, there is a tall, elderly gentleman, uh, human, from the looks of things from where you're standing. And it's got a little bit of a grey stubble, but his hair is perfectly silver fox. It's perfectly manicured. And he is busy cleaning a glass. And uh, Anna Annabeth looks up to you and is like, that over there, that's Ernest. He's anything but. Don't, don't take a single word that that man says as the truth. Well, Penelope slaps him on the shoulder and she's like, what's up, Ernest? <laughs> he drops the glass and is like, oh. um, can Xiang cast Mage Hand to see if he can catch it before it shatters? Go ahead. Uh, is there a roll I need to make to see if it works? Probably like sleight of hand or something. Oh, you know magic. When you sleight of hand? It. Yeah, let's do a sleight of hand. Okay. That's a 20. That's 20. That 20? Uh, no, dirty doesn't... 20. 19 plus 1. 20. The glass starts falling out of Ernest's hand, and then there is just the spectral hand that comes out. I think, uh, I think it's more like a gust of wind, just uh, like catches it. Catches it. Okay, gust of wind comes out, catches the glass before it hits the ground, and gently lays it down at Ernest's feet. And he looks down. He looks up at you two, and it's like. I I I caught I caught it I got it I didn't want the glass everywhere I got it. I I got it, and, yeah. like, and he's like, "Well, shit!" What? <laughs> I don't understand. Hi. How do you do that? Mag mag magic? Well, I'm just a bartender. I I don't know anything about that magic, folk. Wait, uh, no, you have to know. You live in a town with a magically disappeared hole and. You don't see bothered by the magic that's kind of trapped us. So you must know something about magic. Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm never classed in training magic. I'm a bartender. 
I know how to tend bar, uh, but you know, I, w I was once told that magic was a thing, and uh, every time I try to ask people what the hell's going on, they're just like, well, it's magic, and I was like, okay, well, that's fine, but I I I've never seen a glass kind of fall and just stop. Ernie. Ernie. Uh, I don't like that. Ernie. I don't like that. Ernie. No. Get a grip. Yes. <laughs> I, I second what Penelope says. Um, I do just want to tell you, and he like leans in very close so that Ernie can hear and Penelope can hear, but that Anne can't hear. And I was like, um, Anne said that we shouldn't believe anything you say. So you're telling me that you don't know anything about magic. Are you, are you, Ernie, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> He looks at you and his eyes are a perfect grey. You have the most beautiful eyes, but also, are you lying? Do you actually know a lot about magic? No, I don't know shit. I don't even know who this Annabeth is. Can I make an insight check? Sure. I don't fucking believe it. Wait, did he just say he doesn't know who Annabeth is? Yeah. Okay. He the... called her Annabeth. He said his, He said her name. Okay, fuck, that's an eight. Um, well, okay. I guess you don't know anything about magic. No, I don't I, know shit. I, I can make a mean cocktail. Can I have one? Also, this is Annabeth, who you don't know. Annab I think Xiang turns to Annabeth and then turns to Penelope and is like, Penny, how does this man who's lived in this town, I assume forever, he's beautiful, oh my god, actually, and like pulls Penny aside, I think, I think Xiang just pulls Penny aside and is like, Penny, can we talk about how beautiful this man is for like a second? Penny responds and says, don't cry just yet, darling. I'm... Let's get some liquor in him. Ooh, okay, you are a messy bitch, and I'm <laughs> here for it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay. So, uh, who wants a cocktail? Do you oh. have... Okay, yeah. yes. Mm. What you got for me? Well... Come on, barkeep! Move your ass! <laughs> well, I don't appreciate that in my own establishment, but okay. Uh, well, I got a blue one and I got a red one. That's not... Those aren't cocktails, those are colours. Well, the one cocktail's blue and the other one's red. I can't tell you no more. And Penny wonders, is this the Matrix? Yes, Penny's otherworldly knowledge of the real world, <laughs> of our world. <laughs> <There's> the... <laughs> so, uh, blue or red? Penny, you go first. Give me the red. Okay. So, um, Ernest. Because he... it's the color of blood. Oh, okay. Extra Penny, mystery. that's so dark. <laughs> Penny, that is so dark. So Ernest Her turns one around. eye shifted in when she thought about blood, though. Oh, Jesus. Her one eyeball. Yeah. Why? But then, it, but then she quickly did this and then, like, it went back. Has she got a glass eye? <laughs> or is she just no. a mess? No. <laughs> okay, no, wait, hold on. Xiang's going to have to make an inside check into that. Um, into the eye. It, 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 into what the fuck just happened with Penny's eye. So I don't know if it's the darkness. Um, sure. Can I? Sure. I won't stop. No rolls. That's fourteen. <laughs> we only don't want. We'll stop the stomach rolls, not the, <laughs> not the dice rolls. Oh Jesus! <laughs> All the stomach rolls. <laughs> so Xian sees Penny's eye, kind of do a little bit of a wobble, and it goes in, and. Doesn't really pay that mind, much mind to it because he could just think that, oh, she's a little bit squint. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So, Ernest says, uh, cocktails. What was it? Red one, color of blood. Okay, so he turns around and 
you see his hands flying through the air, bottles being thrown up and down, and you can only think that he is making, he is like a professional as hell. And he turns around, and the cocktail is purple. And here you go, miss. Bitch, are you blind? What? You said red. Yeah. Yeah, are you colorblind? Ernest? Not Ernie? Me. Well, <clears throat> no. This, this is red, ain't it? No. Red. Uh, are you... Okay. Um... Oh, no, Ernest. It's purple. I, I, I never. No, it's red. But y'all show it in my mind right now. Okay, can I have the blue one? I don't feel for an existential crisis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Ernest turns around and he starts, the whole maneuver starts again, and he turns around and the cocktail is bright red. Okay, cool. I, I think Xiang just takes the blue one and gives it to Penelope and then takes the purple one. I think it costs to tech magic again. Just to see, like, what the fuck is happening there. Okay. And why he's colorblind, too. Are you casting on the drink is or on Ernest? On... I mean, I can fucking do it as many times as I want. I think I just kind of do it both times. So, like, the one is reaching out for the drink and the other one is, like... I'm... Actually, he wouldn't do it to Ernest because there's no subtle way to be, like... Do that. Yeah. So, I think he just cast it on the drink. It's just a drink. Nothing special about it. Yeah. Xiang, when he learns this, he turns, he like whispers to Penny, he's like, uh, yeah, I think Ernie is colorblind. I think it's rude to point it out. I think he just sees life in a different color. Is Ernest trying to poison Penny? Because if anything that Disney has taught us is that purple, it's poison. I mean, it's cool, Penny. Don't worry. You can have the red one. I'll have the purple one. Hmm. Penny's just suspicious of everything. <laughs> That's fair. So She's a you... paranoid. So Penny's She's a, a secret one. paranoid schizophrenic. Okay. As well. So Penny takes the red one and uh, Xiang takes the purple one. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty good cocktails. You can't tell <laughs> from just looking at them or tasting them what the hell flavors they are, but they're pretty damn good. Is there a taste check that we could do? No. To see if this is actually a fucking good cock. What about a survival check? What about see if we die? I don't know. I have no. I'm just gonna stop survival you right there. Check. It's just a good cocktail. Okay. The men. Is it? Color. Yeah, because I, I don't fucking trust any of these people. They don't seem shady as shit. Cause they live in a goddamn ditch. Exactly. <laughs> no, they live on the outside of a ditch. I yeah. mean, same difference. These but, people are all thus. And they're just cocktails, so... Okay. Are they yeah. Loki from Kimberly? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very local joke. <laughs> okay. So do you need to take a seat? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think we do. Okay. Um, Alfred is still around, like, he's in the bar. Like, nobody's gonna fucking get him out of the bar. But no. he just kind of, like, goes and purchases something. Okay. So you go just down to the, the nearest table that's open for you two. Looks a bit rickety and gross, but you sit down anyway and it's fine. And then Annabeth comes and joins you at the table and she's like, So, yeah, about Ernest, uh, he don't see so well, but, you know, you, d you, don't, you don't tell people that, it's not very nice. You told us not to believe anything he says. Yeah, you, you shouldn't. But, Wh but Why? But if the man can't tell color, that's different. Okay, but why should we not believe anything he says? Because he's a pathological liar. <laughs> okay. Um. I mean, we don't so know whether... So he's lying about being colorblind too? That's what I'm saying. Well, I can't, I can't speak to that, but he might be. Also... Does he mess with people? Uh, well, we don't have much fun around here, so... Could be. We also don't know whether you're a pathological liar or not, because you could just be. I understand. <laughs> she leans over the table, is like, "Honey, look into my eyes." Okay. Does she... it? Is this the face of a liar to you? 
I mm-hmm. don't. I basically told y'all with, that you're either doomed or you with survive. That mist, with that mist on your head, I can't trust you for anything. Well, honey, from the sounds of things, you sell drugs, so... How did you know that? I didn't tell nobody about it. We, Except for we you, our in, boy. I said nothing. You know I've been right next to you the entire time. We might time. be in a secluded town, but we, we, we heard of y'all. Queen Penny of the Drug Empire. We know y'all. Okay, what the fuck do you know about me then? Well, I don't know y'all. Well, then you don't know y'all. You know her. Well, can't you forgive my folksy charm for just one goddamn minute? I don't trust your folksy charm. I'm gonna oh. tell. I'm gonna tell you straight up. Well, I don't and... trust your bird. Why <laughs> is everybody so rude? Well, you you were too rude is... to me. But anyway, what what does Alfred have to do with it all? The Ace. fact of the matter is, we don't trust you. Thank you, Penny. And, I I didn't think you'd be the savior. On the box. <laughs> Actually, that brings us to a good question. I think I think that Xiang would most probably have brought his little doohickey, his little cube, the 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 night cube, whatever the fuck, uh, with him. Um, uh, Lulu did. Penny bring her compass with her. Or did she leave it with her she'll, she'll just snap. She'll just snap, and Gustavo will bring it. <laughs> so do you? Okay, yes, I do. Okay. okay. And Gustavo, he trots off in a very dignified manner to get your box. Yeah, and uh, we have a couple of questions about these items that came in that box that you said is basically our doom. Um, well, what's this thing about? And he just kind of like plops the... Why would you bring that here? Why? Why don't y'all just leave that up in the room? My god, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? And you see Ernest. He looks at the table and his his eyes go wide. And now he's... Oh. <laughs> mm. His eyes go wide and he just looks down, shaking his head as he keep, keeps cleaning a glass. And it's like, why would y'all... And Annabeth's like, why would y'all bring that here? At... At told y'all it's just uh i told you i've got a lot of these boxes and you know where i got these boxes people done died oh uh, y'all just i can't even work with y'all um these things yeah we're trying not to die can you give us answers you you told us to go drink i mean obviously i'm gonna drink and look into this yeah i was just hoping that you kind of forget and just end up living here just so you don't die but okay fine that sounds incredibly miserable yeah. there's no way i would ever be trapped <laughs> well that's not very nice but i said what i said oh our camera's died oh i'm almost done uh, well so mm-hmm. these these boxes they are uh, they're kind of like, they call to people, I guess. They get sent out to people hoping that they'll come to this town and solve whatever the fuck is going on in the academy. That's all we know. It's, it's And they always have the same goddamn things in it. Like, if I had to smelt down all the gold that I have from those goddamn compasses, I would be a rich woman. But what the hell's the point? There's somebody else in the small town is bankrupt. So it's just, okay, fine. I'll keep them as trinkets. But nobody here who has, nobody's ever come with one of those boxes and survived. Even who like, sends- they live here for a little bit when they give up and they can't figure it out. And then they just try and figure it out and they end up dead. It's who sent them? And- nobody knows. Nobody knows where the boxes came from. Nobody knows the boxes get there. They just arrive. That's and, incredibly ominous. Right? And we don't know what the fuck's going on. But there's something going on in the academy that can only be sold with these boxes. And we don't know what the fuck it is. So if you're all willing to throw your lives away, then fine. Go on, go into the academy, you go figure this shit out. But other than that, 
Just stay here. Safe. Anne? Eh? Yeah? I'm going to be very honest with you. Okay. I would literally rather die than live the rest of my life stuck in a dome in this town. And Xiang, like, fucking throws back um, the rest of his drink and stands up and is like, Penny, can we go figure this shit out? We've got to get out of here. That's right. And as you do that, the tavern door swings open and two men walk in. Half of their bodies, from what you can see, is completely covered in this black opal stuff that's co coating their veins and their skin. And on their wrists is a solid black opal bangle bracelet. And they've got their hoods over their heads and they go straight to Ernest and they start talking. And then Ernest goes into the back and he comes out with a bunch of ale. They take the ale without causing a fuss. And as they walk out, they bump into Annabeth. And she's like, hey, y'all, watch where you're going, you damn cultists. And as she does that, oh, she's sassy. as she says that, the hood comes down from one of them and his entire face is covered in the stuff. I think immediately I Alfred just like squawks. He was like not expecting that. And the man responds, Madam, we are here to do God's work. Oh, Jesus. We have come here for libations. And we will not sit here with the peasant folk and these two outsiders who have brought doom upon us once again. Hey, eat me. Who you call and, an outsider? And <laughs> he pulls out a dagger. Fuck, I'm going to kill this man. And points it towards Xiang and roll for initiative. Okay. Fucking, fucking shit. Gustavo. To get my weapons. <laughs> so roll the initiative, dearie. 20. 20, okay. I highly doubt anybody's going to go before you. <laughs> Where's the initiative? Um, under Is proficiency. The... Next to your armor class. Okay, where's that now? <laughs> oh god, guys. I was fine on the other <laughs> thing. Um, okay, so do you see your strength, your... Dexterity, all of those checks, right at the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So follow that until you see proficiency, oh. and then just yeah. underneath. Initiative. Yep. Let's see it now. So what'd you get? Fourteen. That's one. Yeah, fifteen. Okay. Okay. So you are gonna go first, Xiang. Uh huh. And before you can do that, the um. The man, he takes his dagger and he holds it to Annabeth's throat. And what the fuck did he do that before I, before I could go? He pointed it at me. He's magic. Okay, buddy. fine, fine, <laughs> sure. And Shang is mad at this man. He's basically holding this woman as a hostage. So what do you do? Why Annie shut her damn mouth? Um. Because she's sassy. The problem is that's only one... Okay. You know what? You know what he's gonna do? Oh, Jesus. Xiang is gonna stare this man down. Right? And then he's going to activate, um, as a bonus action, Spriggan. Which is? Which means you assume the form of a primal force of nature for one minute or until you dismiss it. For the duration, you have the following benefits. Your AC equals 15. Your fingers twist into sharpened roots, which can be used as natural weapons, dealing uh, 1d4 slashing damage. You have advantage on stealth checks while, may well, while in a forest, which we're not. And you gain two temporary hit points. Cool. That's his bonus action. So everybody's watching and Shang, Xiang just 
stands there staring daggers at this man and then fucking transforms into this horrifying thing and then goes invisible. Is that your whole your whole move? That's his action. Okay. And then with his movement, he's gonna walk he's gonna like go around to stand behind the man. Okay. So I don't know if I need to make a salt check to see if he will see me. But I'm cool if he doesn't. Because I'm invisible. Yeah, I think you're fine. You won't need to do a roll. Cool. Oh, wait, that's the wrong place. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, that's what I did. So, then the other bandit, he pulls out a scimitar and goes for Penny with it. And now I just have to find a fucking dice on this thing. <sighs> just use my thing. And just don't get your DM stink on it. My damn my DM stink Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so he pulls out a scimitar and he rolls a 20 hit, which <laughs> does beat your AC, Miss Penny. And with that it is a D6 plus one. And he does four damage to you, Miss Penelope. So if you can mark that on your check sheet. And okay. then it's round to you. So what does Penny do? She grabs her Yakalwas, or Gustavo eventually comes through. <laughs> and she got a yak Yakalwas thing things. Okay. Does she, does she roll? You first roll the hit DC, so it says plus four. Wait, what? Next to you, your color, whatever, there's a thing that says plus oh, four. Oh, yeah. Plus Press four. that one. So she's got 19. Well, that hits, definitely. And then you roll the one next to it. And she's got seven damage, so she pierces him in the nipple. Just because. <laughs> okay. So he takes the hit and he stumbles back quite bloodied. Let's put it that way. And then it's the turn of... Yes, the... bitch! You be <laughs> so messing it's... with me! <laughs> so then it is the turn of the man holding Miss Annabeth. And he, with his other hand, pulls out a crossbow. And, well, there's nobody else to, sh to aim at because you can't see your man's over here. Xiang, who is behind him and invisible. And points it at you, Miss Penny. Oh, Ooh. Jesus. And rolled the nat 20. <laughs> is Penny gonna die? Is Penny gonna die? Did you... You didn't take your hit points off, dear. Okay, I'm just gonna do it for you. It's four, wasn't it? Yeah. Nine, yeah. Okay. Roll the 20. Oh Jesus, I'm so sorry, dearest. And, and what does he do now? He rolls a 1d8 plus 1. Does 2 damage. But he has advantage, right? Yes. No. No. Okay. So he that's 2 plus whatever, and then times it by 2. So he does 6 damage. So it's two plus one, and then times. Two. Yeah. So he does six damage. Jesus. Okay. Well, that's not a bad. That's not a bad. Yeah, you're fine. And then Chiang. Man, for no reason, attacked because of Anne's big ass mouth. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is Chiang going to do? Because Chiang can do some wild shit. Okay. Um. You know what Shang's actually going to do? You know, he's not going to use that. That's dumb. I think... Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to fucking kill this man. Jesus, okay. Um, What is it? Uh, yeah, alright. I think... Okay, so Shang's going to... Now that he's behind him... Which one? The, the one holding Ant. Okay. The one holding Ant specifically. He takes out his uh, quarterstaff and oh boy, like smacks him on the head with the the end. Okay. So and your that hit is 
plus 3 equals a d20. Nope, never mind. Is that a, what is that? It's a nat one. So you go to do it and you hit Annabeth over the head. You Bitch, conk her in the that? head instead, and she just goes, ah, shit! And oh, and yes. the fucking invisibility wears off. And the invisibility off. wears off. So you're just standing there like a complete twit. Uh, well, a horrifying twit. A horrifying with, your, with, your, with your tree dick in your hands, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my lord. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then it is the turn of the other man. And he pulls out his scimitar as well. And he goes before Xiang. And I can't remember if I can go. There we go. He rolls a 16. Damn it. Is that a hit? My AC is 15 at this point, yeah. Okay. And then it's a 1d6 plus 1. He does five damage. Okay. To you. Uh, I've got two so temporary he... hit points. Uh, two temporary. What? I get two temporary hit points. Okay. So what was that? Five. Yeah. So I only take three. Damage. So he swings out wide and hits your your horrific tree body with your tree dick in your hand. <laughs> oh fuck! And you see a little bit of sap ah. start leaking out because I assume that's what happens with you. <laughs> it says, or maple, no, no, no. it says, doesn't he leak maple syrups? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, it doesn't say he becomes a tree, it says he becomes a primal force of nature. He just happens to have a shop. Uh, although, we're he... assuming a tree, yeah, in all he... its glory. You know what? He does, he becomes a tree, okay. And then it's over to you, Miss Penelope. So, I roll another attack thing thing. Yes, right. Another dark thing, if you have another weapon, or if you have magic. Okay, I don't really have magic. Um, I think I'll do an arm strike, so I can punch him. Because like, Penny is now mad at this point, because now she's left the so Yakawa man, in the guy. This man has a sword. But now she's left her Yakawa in that guy's nipple. You still you stab it and you pull it you, out. You just do that. You don't let go of it. You didn't throw it or anything. Oh, did you want to leave it? So you want yes. to leave this thing dangling off his nipple? Yes, it's embedded in his nipple now. Okay, so, so you're I'm going... So you're going, I'm going nipple, for... The man with the nipple piercing, okay? So you're going okay. for an arm strike. So I can punch it in further. And okay. pierce him. Deeper. Okay, so roll the hit DC. I got five plus four. Which is nice. No, honey, that doesn't that doesn't land. So oh, you God, you hit. missed. You reel ah. back. Ah. You reel back, and as you go in for the punch, the man dodges nipple and all, and you completely miss and stumble over a little bit. And then now it is off to the man who just was holding poor Annabeth, and he is going to use. She's like them. Sorry? I think I hope he kills her because she's dumb. She should have shut her damn mouth. <laughs> and he is going to pull out... He's going to use his crossbow again to aim at Miss Penny. Uh, How close is Penny to him? Well, she's within five feet. She tried to give him a hit. A crossbow. Why not? Then he's going to roll with her. I'm so sorry. This is rules lawyering. Uh, if he shoots a crossbow at anybody within five feet, he has disadvantage. Well, he is an idiot, so... Okay, cool. Just wanted to... Just, just wanted to check. Okay, so... I'm gonna roll a disadvantage. Sorry. Not the rules. I, no, you... Hey, it's your game. You can fucking... No, you can tell me to fuck no, off. it makes sense. So that's a three. I don't think you can get much well, lower than that. That is not one. A 16. So... He fires off the bolt, and it flies right past... Like a million miles past you and out the window. Completely Did I missed. dodge it? Did you I didn't even it? have to. This man, he was basically shooting, like, a guy in the next town over. He completely missed you. So then it is over to Xiang again, I believe. Okay, hang on. I just need to find a piece of paper. That's what I'm looking for. Penny's okay. now mad because she's got a scuff on her boots. From what? <laughs> she, she tripped over. Oh, right. Um, These drinks? And they're expensive. 
<laughs> Only the mm. finest. So the question is, the question is, are these bandits high in constitution? Um, because I could do one thing, but that's no fun. Um, I need to go grab a drink again. I ran to my fridge quickly. Go on. Okay. I think what running, running. I think what Xiang does. Should I wait for Lulu? I think I wait for Lulu. Okay, I'll wait for Lulu. Gives me enough time to think <laughs> and pause. Um. Hmm. <laughs> You back? Oh, she don't hear me. Back, darlings. Okay, welcome back, dearest. So, uh, okay. Uh, Shang's gonna witch bolt this guy. Oh Jesus! Okay. So he's gonna make an attack. Well, just explain that to the audience who doesn't understand. Okay. So. Including me. Witch bolt, a beam of crackling blue energy lances out toward a creature within range, for forming a sustained arc of lightning between you and the target. Make a ranged spell attack against that creature. On a hit, the target takes 1d12 lightning damage, and on each of your turns for the duration, you can use your action to deal 1d12 lightning damage to the target automatically. Uh, the spell ends if you, lose your, if you use your action to do anything else. The spell also ends if the target is ever outside the spell's range, or if it has total cover from you. Okay. okay. So who are you going for, Nipple Man? Or... I'm going for the one that's holding Anne. I don't like the fact that he's holding Anne. Okay. I'll go for okay. the Nipple Guy. I have a plus... <laughs> You know what? Actually, what's probably going to happen, let's see if it hits, but if it hits, uh, Xiang basically shoots an arc of lightning at the metal part of the Yikalwa, which is like stuck in his nipple. Is So it's gonna, it's gonna be a conductor. Okay. But we're gonna see if this hits. Ma'am with her product placement. Yes. Pringles. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Pringles. <laughs> My god, are you fucking Johnny kidding me? What was it? That's a three plus four, seven. Oh, sorry, dearest. That Jesus. does not hit. Jesus Christ in fucking heaven. That does not hit. Do you want to roll the other one to see what it might have been, just to be disappointed? Do I? You know what I do? It would have been six damage. Oh. Well, that's a shame. It is what it is. Lightning ox out of you. You see it building first, and then it just arcs right on out of you, flying past him and hitting the metal cocktail shaker on Ernest's bar table. Oh my god, thank oh god. god, I was so scared that Ernest was holding it. Well, you, you growing can't frustrated. Do well, Ernest isn't very pleased, though, because that was his favorite one, That's allegedly. Fair. So then it goes to... Who is it? The, the other guy, the other bandit, the one not holding Miss Thank. Yeah. And these two are kind of just a bloody. They, yeah, they're kind of low end. So he pulls out his scimitar again, and goes for, Xiang. Mm -hmm. So let's just see here. Because he yes. Uh, you, it's the wrong dice. Oh, it's the wrong dice. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, was it? So fifteen. No. Doesn't hit. Well, my AC is exactly 15. I don't know if it hits on exact or not. That's up to you. I would say it hits you, but it kind of just grazes your clothing and tears it a little bit. So I don't take damage? No, you don't take any damage. Okay. This guy has got egg on his face like there's no tomorrow. But then must I think, I think mm -hmm. when he like does that, I just turn to him and obviously I look like a fucking tree, like an evil tree man. So I just turn so to him. So he cuts off a leaf. Basically, cuts up like a leaf, and I turn to him, and it's just like, Urgh! I want to see if I can fucking intimidate <laughs> him or something. If only it wasn't you. If only you had another action, you could have <laughs> one. Oh well. <laughs> Frustrating. He looks a little bit flustered. Let's put it that way, because he missed, and there's this fucking tree beard over okay. here. Okay. Okay, Beth Penelope. What do you do? Are you going for the double man again? Try the. Oh, but that's very good. I'm gonna, I'm snapping to Gustavo again. Get me the axe. And right. 
I guess we're just going to say that Gustavo hands it to you because we're going to go under the assumption no. from now on that you have them on you. And he's like, <laughs> you know, madam, polished it to the highest quality <laughs> and sharpened the blade. I roll it. And then I also tell him to get my Yakawa out of that man's nipple. No, he can't do that, dear. Oh, God, no. Yeah, I want my Yakawa. You though. left it there. It was up to you. I'm rolling. I rolled... 19 plus 4. Hmm. Well, you definitely fucking hit. And then I you're... hit him on the head. Wait, so which one are you trying to hit? You're hitting the, the little one... man. No, the one that's got Anne. Can okay. If I remember correctly, that is the nipple man. Yeah, it is that. Yes, that, that is the nipple man. man. And then I hit 7 plus 2. Well, <laughs> you, you went for his head, right? Mm-hmm. With your axe. You. With your great axe that has just been sharpened by your by your valet, the axe yeah. comes down hard. Center mass. Right there. You hear his skull cracking as it just lodges itself in the man's head. So mm -hmm. here he is with his your your kalwa and in his nipple and a great axe in his brain. Dead. Jesus. You have murdered this man. Blood splatters over Annabeth. But she's surprisingly cool about it. All she's right. a bit shocked, my, but at the same time she's like, yeah. My All eye right. does the thing my eye does the thing again. The thing thing. This time. Yeah. So now <laughs> it goes red though. Oh my god. Oh Jesus. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then it is Xiang, because he's dead now. Yeah. Okay, so Chiang is fucking done with this. So he's going to take his quarter staff, and okay. because the uh, the other guy, the non the the non dead one, is behind him or next to him, is roughly behind next next to behind adjacent. Okay, yeah, I think Chiang takes his. I believe in you. Does, yeah, it takes his quarter staff. Uh, wait, which one does more damage? Okay, no. You see, uh, Xiang's hands. He like just drops the quarter staff there in his hands, and his hands like light up with electricity, and he just. How close is this guy to? Within five feet. I mean, it doesn't matter, but like then he just his hands like cracking with electricity, just like pushes the electricity towards him and i'm going to need your boy to make boy. a constitution saving throw oh jesus okay oh it's a 20 right what it's a d20 yeah it's a d20 <clears throat> plus constitution so that's an eight nope he fails my saving throw is 12. okay uh, oh, so I'm going to do 1d8 lightning damage. Okay. Nope, that's the wrong dice. There we go. Eight. That's a two. Th okay, well, fuck. That's two damage to this two man. Two damage. So God you hit him and... Um, okay. And then as a bonus action, he's going to cost uh, Expedious Retreat. Uh, Xiang's gonna cast Expedious Retreat on himself. Which is... So that means that the spell allows you to move at an incredible pace when you cast the spell, and then as a bonus action on each of your turns, you can take the dash action. So uh, he wax him. hits him with electricity, uh, and is, has been let go, right? Yeah, she's just sitting there covered in blood. Yeah, I think, if, if you'll let me do this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Xiang, when he dashes, he tries to grab Anne and get her, like, sort of just further away from there. I'm going to have you make a, hmm, I'm going to give you, do an athletics check. Okay, I'm not shit at that. Not great, but I'm not shit. It's probably not the best use of that one, but we'll see. Uh, Difficult situations. Kind 12. Of 12 athletics. I'm going to say you try to grab her, but you just kind of... Nudge her and she falls over out of the chair, but she is away from the situation. Okay, cool. Yeah, but so uh, Xiang has dashed yeah. sort of to stand next to 
uh, Penny instead of so close to this guy. Okay. Mustang, are you trying to do Penny's eyes? You look quite evil over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, man. yeah, me that has just jolted that guy. So now it is the time of the man. Mm -hmm. And same old, same old, pulls out the scimitar. Well, mm. he's got, well, he's got it out yeah. every time. No, he's just keeps putting it away and pulling it out, putting it away. So he rolls a 13. To who? To Miss Penny. Because she does seem God to be the biggest damn threat. it. Why does she say Do that? I? Well, okay. She's big and she just put a great axe, great axe through her guy's head. That's true. She's Remember, not big, she's, she's short. She's but... just quite small, yeah. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> but she did just kill a man. She did just kill a man. She's got, she got, she's, she's far strong. <laughs> she's far strong. You know, carrying all that meh. <laughs> okay. So now I just have okay, and then one d six plus one. That is three damage. <laughs> Another gonna... hit. I put it in. Okay. Now I'm down to sixteen because of this dumb bitch Anne. <laughs> <laughs> and now she can't stop screaming. She's just screaming ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're allowed to. It's a free action. So how do she, how do I turn on my rage? Because I've got magic. You should have done that like, before you. Isn't it her turn? Done now? It. Oh, it is her turn. Yes, it is. So you can just go into a rage. Is okay. that what you want to I do? won't. Yeah, I I will do. You should probably go into I will a rage do. before you. No, I'm not gonna. I will do hellish rebuke. Well, shit. Okay. Isn't that? Because I'm mad now. Wait, when isn't my that eyes... a reaction? Is it a? Is no, it a reaction? It's a second level spell. Click on it. It'll tell you what. Store. Okay, I just said use. Yeah, it's a reaction. Then... Oh, it's a reaction. So, no, no, no. So she can do it because he just hit her. Oh, right. There you go. So this mm -hmm. isn't even on your turn. So. So. Uh, attack. Dex save. Just speak the words. Um, My brain's turned off. Yeah, so uh, you basically just need to roll the... You need to click on the uh, effect. That 3d10 that you see. You need to roll that, mm. Lulu. And then you just need to roll a uh, deck yes. save. The DC is 10. Okay. So on d20. I roll the Hellish Rebuke. Thing, thing, the effect. That's an 18, dear. Okay, but see if the person takes half or not. Okay, it no, just no. says damage oh, is 14. Uh, yeah. With the hellish rebuke. Built you guys see it? So I take half damage. So what did you roll? 14. I rolled 14. Okay, so, so it takes seven. 7 damage. And... Oof. This man uh, stumbles. And is looking pretty damn fucked up. So you still got your attack, if I'm correct. Yeah. Well, she still has a whole turn. Yeah, you that still got your whole reaction. turn. So what are you going to do? How are you going to end this man? Hopefully. I'm going to punch him in the nuts. So right. unarmed. Okay. Unarmed strike. So roll your hit. I've rolled 15 plus 4, which is 19. That definitely hits. Roll damage. And damage. <laughs> She's going to kill him by punching him in the dick. <laughs> Wait, the damage is, is undefined. Why does it say that? Uh, it's a three. Oh my god! You dude. hit this man square between the legs, and if you listen carefully enough, oh you god. can hear one of his testicles pop. Oh my god! And the shock of that just. Throws him over the edge and he crumples over and just he he is no more. He is livent. But is he, okay, but is he unconscious or is he dead? No, he is gone. Oh my god. She went well, straight for the yeah. she went straight for the plums. And he <laughs> is gone. And um, yeah! I think she I think Xiang sees that and just immediately like the bark falls off him. <laughs> And he, like, <laughs> it literally just, like... You peel out of groups, basically. Literally, it, he, like, unroots. <laughs> and he 
like, and he turns to Penny and he's like, oh my god, that was amazing. Hey, Ernie, can we please have two more drinks? Penny's, so okay. so Penny's, Penny's trying to cover her eyes because, like, being a demon is her secret shame as well. She hopes people don't see it, but they do. So, like, now her eye is still trying to... She's trying to wiggle her eye back. And then she'll <laughs> turn and smile. <laughs> okay. And she's just, like, applauding. She's like, that was fucking amazing. That was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> so, another blue and a red cocktail? Yes, please, Ernie. Okay. And Ernie but now, gets... now Penny, Penny grabs him by the shirt and says, it better be red. Okay. <laughs> I don't need, I don't see the point of the threat, but fine. Um, <laughs> he goes to his mixing, and he turns around, and there's a red and a purple one again. Question. Oh gosh. Yes. Um, are the corpses still on the floor? Yes, and I want you to roll a perception check. Okay. Um, I was actually going to say I want <clears throat> Alfred to fly down. So mm. can Alfred make the perception check instead? Sure thing. Do I also do perception check? You can if you want to. Oh, that's wrong. It's a f I swear to God, Alfred has rolled three twenty-two perception checks Jesus. in a row. This is the third one he's rolled. Literally so, nineteen. Well, I've rolled two. a five. Well, Penny, you see two dead guys on the floor. Oh damn! Uh, is that it? Yeah. The ones basically. that I killed. That's all I see. <laughs> yeah. Well, she killed both of them. <laughs> yeah. I hit the one with electricity, and then accidentally hit fucking Anne in the head. Although <laughs> Anne kind of deserved it. She's, she's a dumb wrong. bitch. Because she's a dumb. Yeah, she... And also she sucks. So uh -huh. with that perception check. So what did Alfred see? Alfred sees a key. Mm -hmm. Perfect gold with a black opal A in the top to fall out of the man whose head was cleft in Twain's pocket. Yeah, I think Alfred, he descends down, like snatches it up, and then, I mean, it's not it's not a big bar, right? No. So Alfred is not like soaring. No, but he's just he, doing his flappings. Yeah, he like flies down, picks it up, like circles around, drops it in Shia's hand. He and he, and he picks up a tiny stone and tries to throw him with no, it. No. Why? <laughs> Don't. I mean, we can fucking play this out if you want. <laughs> but, no. Um, yeah, but, the but, owl is a beautiful creature. But literally oh, what God, Alfred no. does is he flies, drops head. the key. He drops the key in Xiang's hand and then goes down, lands next to the fucking corpse and starts eating. It's an owl, it's a dead corpse. What do you want? Okay, so wait, what did he do with the key? He, dro he dropped it in Shang's hand. Okay. So he flew around and then did what animals do. Okay. Started eating. Okay. So, fine. These, uh, these, 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 these men I have slain, are they human? Yes. What are they? They are human. Well, now they're owl food. Yeah. <laughs> Technically. Clefted in twain, as I say again. So, I do think that Alfred goes for the cleft. Oh, Jesus. Nasty. It's where the meat is. What do you want? There's more. Okay. It's a cleft. Is a cleft a nut? No, no, no. no it's. <laughs> oh. Off. Yeah. A cleft so, is, the nut. is like the chin. Um, yeah. Oh. So. I thought it. I thought it was the nuts. So Annabeth. The other man, you got the nuts. Yeah. God. So Annabeth <laughs> sees sees the key, and she's like, "Holy shit." I assume this is important. Well, I would say so. That That's the key to the academy. Cool. So we can... How did... What was that fucking idiot doing with it in his pocket? He... Like, thank God you killed him. Because if he didn't, the rest of those goddamn damned would kill him first. <laughs> the what? Hold on. I'm sorry. The what? What are the damned? Well... There's one, and there's another one. One's got a head what? missing, one's got a nut missing. I heard that thing pop. They I'm going to grab, grab Anne by the shirt, and I say, Listen, lady, I think it's time you stop being so tight-lipped 
and talk. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> and she's basically her little feet are hovering off the floor, and it's like, okay, okay. The day and they they they're cultists. They they worship the sphere. Okay, but isn't what, But he was a cultist. Yeah, the guy that had the key was yeah. a. So like, why would the other damned have killed the damned that had the key? Because in, you're not supposed to leave with it. Uh, There's only two. Two keys? Yes. How, how, how the fuck do you know, Anne? I've uh, been here a long time. I know these fuckers. She's sus. They only got <laughs> two keys, and now y'all got one of them. Jesus. Jesus. Y'all could get in there. Can we, see, can we see if Anne is hiding something more from us? Yeah. You can do a perception or investigation. Uh, or insight. I think insight works better. Uh, uh, I wanted to do an investigation, but uh, insight is fine too. The fuck is. Okay, I've got 16 plus 8. Oh, plus 8? Plus 18. Plus, plus 16. Oh, okay. So I've got, I've got 18, sorry. Okay. Uh... Nah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I've got a six. It's fine. <laughs> don't worry about it. I got nothing. You see as you're holding her in the air, you see she's got a black opal ring on her finger. Fucking knew it, bitch is sus. <laughs> Similar to the ones that the two on the ground had. Well, have, but you know, what are they going to do with it now? Mm -hmm. And she's nonchalant about it. So are you going to ask her a question? Yeah, Shang doesn't see this. Yeah. Are you the damned Anne? Not, not in... No, not no more. I no got more? It. I got out. Uh... She's still waiting. I, I had to do some dark shit, but I got out. No, I have to grab her hand and show Xiang also and say, what is this on her finger where the ring is? So she lifts the hand. Well, Penny lifts Annabeth's hand <laughs> and you see it right there. Black and radiant with rainbow light inside of it. Um, I think Xiang goes to the corpses. And pulls the two ring. They each have one on their fingers. No, they have got bracelets. Oh, so she's oh. got a ring similar to their bracelets. The opal inside. Mm. So I think Xiang... Hmm... It's going to sound kind of gross. Uh, are the bracelets, like... Chain link no. or? They are solid. I think I... So he got a chop... I will say chop his hand. Come on. Yeah, I chop think we both hand. know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't think Xiang chops them off, though. Xiang doesn't have any sharp weapon. So Get me one... Gustavo! Yeah. <laughs> Xiang just sort of starts pulling. Mom! <laughs> How can I be of assistance? Gustavo, bring me those wrist wristy cuffs. <laughs> yeah, actually, I just need an axe. Can I just have an axe? Yeah. <laughs> uh... So, certainly, Mom, is it fine if I uh, lend him one he of your He literally weapons? just said, so just give me the axe, Gustavo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Rude. And Xiang, like, without a fucking second thought, it's almost like he's done this before. He just kind of, like, chops the one arm and then chops the other one, takes the two bangles, uh, hands one over to Penny, and he's like, I think this is probably going to be important. And... What's the difference between the bracelet versus the ring? Is yours more that like is yours more hierarchy type thing? Were you like a dark empress in the damned, or were you like like what's the situation? Well, hey, I'm gonna tell you not to put that damn thing on. Well, it it, do it doesn't open, so like we can't put it on. Right. Well, y'all see them. Mm -hmm. You point to two on the ground. Y'all see all that shit. Covering their bodies. Oh, yeah, the same shit that's covering your body. Yeah. Uh-huh. These things cause it. Then why do you put it on? Because I was in a cult. I was following them. They said, wear this shit. Okay, but, 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 but why? Well, why did they tell you to put it on? Well, I don't know. We were just told. We were all gathered. We were gathered outside the I... academy. 
Um, At this point, I'm sh I'm shaking her and asking her, "Who is the damned? Do an and who is check. A? <laughs> who the fuck is A, bitch? Do an intimidation check because you're holding her like that. Intimidado. Intimidado. Oh damn! I got two plus two, which is four. Can I also do an intimidation check? No, you're not the one holding her. I just cut <laughs> two, two corpses' arms off and then walked over like it was nothing. The man's head was cut open in front of her and she didn't flinch. Fine. Okay, <laughs> so she doesn't react to... Um, She's been around. No, 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 so she doesn't react to Penny doing the... Th like, shaking her. No. She basically... She All right. basically looks up and is like... Honey, I ain't going to share. I can, I can tell you if you ask me. <laughs> Please put me down. I'm going to barf. Put me down. <laughs> All right. Wait, she'll break. So okay, I think cool. then what Xiang does is uh, he like takes Penny's arm and just like put it down, put it down, put it down, whatever. And then like puts his arm like around like around and not, uh, not ominously, yeah, not threateningly. Uh, he's got a plan for if he needs to be threatening, but it's fine. Uh, he doesn't do it threatening, he's just like, okay, I'm sure the dick. it's cool, no, stop, <laughs> she's like, it's cool, don't worry, it's fine, can you just, like, tell us what, what's going on? That was what Penny whispered, by the way. <laughs> Not to... <laughs> I mean... I can make a persuasion check. I don't know if no, it's necessary. She said, she said that she'd yeah. say if you asked. Well, I never got high enough to know the 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 ins and outs. But they're doing some shit in that in the academy. And it's got to do with that sphere down in the ditch. Wait, okay, hold on. I'm so sorry to keep interrupting you, but this is the damned. I thought the people from the academy all disappeared. Yeah, and the damn done moved in. With these two keys. Somehow. So the damn God knows the how. Reject, are they the reject versions of the Academy? No, honey, they they're some cultists. That that sphere popped up and people went a little bit loopy in town. Uh some of us just went on our business and was like, Oh look. Magic lights um, and shit, and then other people saw this stuff that they were pumping through the walls, and they were like, "Oh, this is this is some other darker shit." And they got a bit deep, they got a bit weird, and then that day when the academy just disappeared, all the people inside were just gone. Somehow these motherfuckers got in, and um, they they done took over a part of the building. Like it's too damn big for anybody to like take over the whole thing, but. How how big is the sphere? It's like a big sphere, right? It's not like a like a sphere that you can hold in your hand. Sphere. The okay, so the quarry is roughly like three hundred meters across, mm -hmm. and so diameter all the way around. Yeah. There are buildings all the way around it that have yeah. been sealed off, and the sphere inside, I'd say it's about twenty meters in diameter. Okay, so it's a big fucking sphere. Yeah. Okay. Completely black opal, and but like you can see it, right? Like, like if you're standing at the top, you would have to be standing on like a hill, looking over the academy buildings to be able to see it. Yes. I mean, yeah, but like it's it's visible. It's not like yeah. magically hidden or something. No, it's, it's, just, it's just there at the bottom, blooming, basically. Uh, Penny, I want to go do something. I just want to know if we're like done here with whatever the situation is. I assume somebody else is going to clean up the corpses. Alfred is doing his thing, but I don't think he's going to be able to eat two full-grown men in any short space of time. Oh, uh, Ernest, you're going to clean this shit up? Uh, okay, fine! <laughs> cool. Penny, Penny is pissed at this point because Anne led to her boots being scuffed. And also, like, a lot of health. And she had to do all and she had to do all this murder. You done took two lives today, milady. <laughs> yes, so she's about ready to get out of there. But she's very pissed and hostile towards it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> aren't we fucking all? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what y'all want to do. I, I, I really don't know what you want to do. But just forget about it. Just 
Have a laugh here. It's not that bad. Take us to the quarry, bitch. <laughs> I'm not going there. It's fine. We don't need to go there. We just need to get outside. Can we get outside? Oh, okay. And Ernest gives you, like, a wave. He's like, ah. Thanks, Y'all didn't Ernie. pay, but okay. Thanks, Ernie. It's fine. I still don't like that. And I'll cover it. And, and just fucking walks yeah. out. Doesn't give a shit what Anne says. Just <laughs> walks outside. Okay, I don't even think Anne's going to be able to respond to that. And just walk out into the street. Okay. As soon as we're out, um, Xiang wants Alfred to fly to the quarry and get a closer look at that orb. So, like, because we can't get through the academy buildings yet, like, mm-hmm. at the moment. He wants to fly over it, if possible, get and, like, dive down. Tell me if that's possible. That's, that's if doable. We... It's just a hole in the ground, basically. So, Alfred... Stretches his wings majestically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's flaps. just had a fucking meal. Yeah, blood And then he catches beak. Penny off, off guard again, and she's like, whoa! Motherfucker! <laughs> Come on, you've, you've got to get used to this. It's so, cool. So he flaps his wings, takes um, off, just, and... Just before Alfred takes off, I think, uh, he's, like, stretched out his wings, and Xiang just kind of, like, comes to him and, like, just like rubs a little bit of the blood off of his beak. It's like, you were a little bit dirty. Uh, you're a little bit dirty. Was, I'm gonna say, oh, so you're one of those owl people. Hey, okay, I'm sure. You know what? We're not gonna get into it. It's fine. <laughs> just, just go, my boy. <laughs> Gives himself a little shake. He spreads his wings and takes off, and he heads towards this dense cluster of buildings that they look a bit old, but. They are still built strong. They aren't as weathered as the rest of the town is. And I assume that Xiang can see everything. So as Alfred flies over the first buildings, he just sees this ring of thick pipes that circles through between two rows of buildings, going along the entire circumference of this of this. Big ass circle. Sort of like uh, concentric circles. So like a target thing. So like a ring of buildings, then buildings. a ring of pipes, then a ring of buildings, yeah. and then the ditch. Yeah. So, so it's just but, but... on the ring of the thing, yeah. Okay. But like this thing is huge. So mm-hmm. it's so he flies down into it and on all sides of this ditch they are perfectly smooth. It's like hewn completely from the earth. Precise, not it's like a sphere, hundred percent, like mathematically perfect, uh-huh. and not a single blemish on this stuff. And this happened years ago; it's still perfect. And he flies down towards the sphere, uh-huh. and it's there, looming, giving off a bizarre energy that uh-huh. is both noise and just void is devoid of anything as as well as structured structured the no, the the energy coming off it it feels like it's got a structure to it okay but nothing reaches out nothing tries to attack but then as he's doing his last pass he hears help coming from the and flies ditch. back. Uh, uh, can he do a perception check no. on that help? No. You won't get anything. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then I think Alfred comes back and lands on Shang's shoulder. Shang opens his eyes and is like, Hey, Penny. Hey, Pen- Penny. Penny. Um, I think our notes in our boxes... Came from the sphere. So. Well, Penny casually asks, Who is in the hole? And. It's, there's just a big circle. Yeah, okay, but the circle did just say help. Mm-hmm. It did? I've, I've never. I'm, t- I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it did. 
So all of the shit, all of the boxes, seems to have been coming from the sphere. Which means... Question mark? Well, shit, I don't know. I've never seen it up close. I'll say, but and but you've been here all your life, goddammit. Yes, staying in town, minding the inn. That's why I'm still alive. That's why Ernest sits here in the bar. That sounds it's... like a very miserable life. Yeah, but we're alive. I mean, life without living is not life at all. I, I, I don't know what you've done heard, but trust me when I say... It's not worth it. Y'all, y'all are ahead compared to the others that have come through here. Y'all got that key. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it, but kill, if kill y'all, the others. if y'all are dead set on this, if y'all want to leave, y'all want to get kill, out of here. Who killed what, the others? <laughs> yeah. Find out what that goddamn voice is. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How did the others die? The, the people in the academy. No, yeah, the people no, that had the boxes. The, others, the yeah. ones before us. Yeah. They were just found dead outside the academy doors. What? You know what? Fuck this. Uh, There's something Anne is not telling us. Hey, Penny. Hey, Penny. Uh, listen. I think we both need to go, like, drink ourselves drunk. Go sleep for like a proper fucking night, and then tomorrow morning, we need to hit that academy. We need to like we've got a key. We can get the fuck in. Uh, I think we should just do it because I cannot be here with these fucking people for literally any longer. But I do need to sleep. Let's head out. Let's head out. And with that, I think that's, we're going to end it there. So okay. thank you for everybody for watching the first ever episode of Gin and Dragons. There's some fucked up shit going on. I know, right? It came from my that, mind. It's fucked up. That, that end is just too so-so. Mm. She's not sus. So, but all right. as I said in the beginning, grab your drinks. And roll for initiative, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Totally.